Hey guys, it's Miss Arlequin, and in today's lesson, we're going to talk about crafting our introductory paragraphs. You're going to want to have a sheet of loose leaf paper out in front of you. Make sure you put your heading on it. You want to put the title of your essay, and we're going to write our introduction on this sheet of loose leaf paper. When we're done, we're going to use this loose leaf to type the paragraph into our Google Drive draft. All right, so in previous lessons, we've talked about the structure of an essay and how the structure of an essay can be compared to an hourglass. And so since we are focusing on the introduction today, we are focusing on the top part of the hourglass. So we're going to be talking about the engaging lead and connecting our lead to our thesis. We've already written our thesis statements for this assignment. And so what we're really looking to do today is to write the sentences that are going to come before the thesis and lead into them. All right, so what should an introductory paragraph do? Well, in general, an introduction has three main purposes. It should get your reader's attention and interest so that they want to read your writing. It should identify the specific topic of your writing. So by the time your reader gets to the end of that first paragraph, they know specifically what the rest of the essay is going to be about. And you want to begin with a general introduction to your overall topic. You want to connect the general introduction to the more focused thesis or the point of the essay. All right, so we're going to start with the opening sentence or sentences of our essay, which should be our engaging lead. And we call it an engaging lead because it's meant to engage or catch the interest of your reader. So there are a lot of different ways that you can catch a reader's interest, a lot of different engaging lead strategies. I have a few listed on the slide in front of you, but this is in no way the extensive list. You can find additional strategies in Google Drive in our student resource folder. So one way that you can start is you can start with an open-ended question. And what makes a question open-ended is it's not a yes or no question. It's a thinking question that there's not just one answer and you would really be asking your reader to kind of think about what they already know, maybe form an opinion or put themselves into the character's shoes. You could begin with a quote from the text or a quote that comes from any outside source, but whatever quote it is, it would have to be related to your topic. And if you were going to choose a quote from the text, it would have to be a very meaningful quote. You wouldn't just choose some throwaway line of dialogue like, how are you? That wouldn't really be very engaging. You can also use an imaginative scenario where you ask your reader to imagine themselves in the character's shoes. You want to be descriptive and you could even start it with the frame, imagine you. And then you've kind of completed it with a situation that's related to the story and you're asking your reader to put themselves into that situation. Um, you could tell your reader an interesting fact, which wouldn't really be that appropriate for literary essays, but could be for other types of essays, for example, research papers or persuasive. When you could write general statements about your topic, could be general statements that are just your basic thoughts and feelings about it. So for example, if I was writing about the theme of dreams, I could start out just generally talking about dreams, giving some background how other people think about dreams or how they feel about dreams. And then as my paragraph goes on, I get more specific. All right, a lead should not be too specific to the topic you're writing about, which means you don't necessarily want to mention the author's name or the story title or specific characters' names in your first few sentences. And you don't want your lead to be unrelated to your thesis and the details that are going to be in your body paragraphs. So if I was writing an essay about Tuesday the other June, and I was going to write about bullying, I wouldn't necessarily start my essay by saying, imagine you and your mother had a close relationship and your father left. Because even though that is a detail from the story that my reader could connect to, it's not an important detail related to the theme of bullying, which is what my essay is really going to be about. To begin your lead, the first thing you want to think about is what is your essay going to be about? What are the specific topics? And this includes the book title, the author, and what your specific topic or point of the essay is going to be. So if I was going to write 
uh, for this particular task in Unit 2 about the strategies that an author used. And I was going to use the chaser as my text. Then I know that my specific topics are the chaser, the author John Collier. I know that he uses irony, so that's a strategy that I'm going to focus as my body paragraphs and my text evidence. And I might talk about how the irony is used to develop the theme of love and how maybe the irony also develops suspense. And so these are specific topics that I'm going to go into detail about in my body paragraphs. Now, what I can do is I can use different strategies and I'm going to pick the one that I like the best clearly or the one I think is more appropriate for this topic. And based on those specific topics, irony, suspense, love, the chaser, I'm going to try to come up with a general way to introduce them. So the first strategy is questioning the reader. And it's engaging to the reader because it makes them think of an answer and it activates their prior knowledge on the topics that my essay is going to be about. So for this essay, I could write something like, what's the difference between love and obsession? Is it love to always worry about another person? Is it love to feel jealous if they talk to another man or woman? Is it love to want to know every little thing they say? Or is that obsession? Notice that I am introducing some of the themes of the chaser. And these are themes that I'm going to discuss in my body paragraph related to irony. But I haven't mentioned the story title yet or the characters. I could try the imaginative scenario strategy. And this is a really engaging strategy because it makes the reader of your essay place themselves into a situation related to the topic of the essay and it helps them make a connection. Making a connection is a really important thing for a reader to do. It keeps them interested. Imagine you buying someone's love or forcing someone to love you. You probably wouldn't want that, but most people would do whatever just to have the person they love love them back. Buying someone's love isn't true love. True love is being with someone that loves you and you love that person back. All right, so you might have noticed that I am using second person, which is a good point of view to use when you're doing the imaginative scenario, again, because you really want your reader to make a connection. And once again, I have not mentioned Alan's name or the name of the story yet. I will eventually, but this is about the general engaging lead, getting them interested. All right, the final example that I'm going to apply to my chaser essay is giving a definition and a general discussion of the topic. And this is engaging because it gives the reader background information they need in order to understand the essay. So if I thought I was writing about a topic that my audience might not know that much about, or if I thought that there was some really basic information they have to have in their minds in order to understand what I'm going to talk about in the body paragraphs, well, then this would be the strategy that I would pick. Love can't be brought. Love is an affection that comes from the heart. When you are in love, you feel it. Love is enforced. Love doesn't come in special little packages like most of the things we have. There can be a potion to make a person love you, but it won't be love. It will be obsession, forced, and non-affectionate. All right, so now what I would like you to do is use one of the lead strategies we've just reviewed to begin your essay. Remember, you are writing this engaging lead on your sheet of loose leaf paper that I asked you to take out at the beginning of the video. And if you need some additional support, just remember that the student resource folder and Google Drive has engaging lead strategies and examples. So you can also explore some of the other strategies. If you see something you like better than the three that I just modeled, you can use uh, a different strategy as long as it is engaging and as long as you are just generally introducing your topic. So pause the video and take a few minutes to write your lead. All right, so now that we've written our lead sentences, we're going to move on to the next sentence or sentences of our paragraph. And these are the sentences where you are beginning to connect your lead to your thesis by introducing the specific topic of your essay. So what you're basically looking to do here is you're looking to mention the author, the titles of the text that you're writing about, or perhaps just the genre that you're going to be writing about. And which one you do kind of depends on what you're writing about, what the specific task is. So 
When you're connecting your lead to your thesis, you want to be more specific. Remember, the hourglass is getting a little more narrow as we go down the introductory paragraph. You want to avoid saying my essay is about. That is not appropriate for formal writing. This is something that students do when they're first learning to write essays. I kind of think of a sentence like this as like the training wheel when you're learning to ride a bike. Now that we're older and we've written essays for a few years now in school, we should not need to use this phrase. And again, you're going to start connecting your general introduction to the more specific points you're writing about. Now for my sample essay, the specific topics are the title of the story and the theme I'm writing about and for our performance task our other specific topic is the writing strategies that the author uses. Now there's a couple of ways that we can write these context sentences. So there are three strategies. The first one is you can write a sentence where you give background on the author you are writing about. And what you're basically doing is you're mentioning the author's name and you're mentioning a fact about them as a writer. So the types of stories they write would usually be a good connecting sentence. Langston Hughes, an African-American poet, often writes poems about the struggles African-Americans go through. And so if I'm writing about one of his specific poems that is about an African-American experience and a struggle, this would be a slow introduction to that specific text. So right here, you have a sentence frame that you can use whenever you want to use this strategy for your connecting sentence. Blank is an author who writes stories this part can change depending on what you're writing about. For example, I was writing about poems, so I said poems instead of stories. If I was writing about a nonfiction author, then it might be a different genre. And here you say what they usually write it about. This is a perfect strategy when you're writing about multiple texts from the same author. And clearly, this is only a strategy you can use if you happen to know a lot about your author. For example, I don't really know a lot about John Collier, so I can't really write about the types of stories he writes. So for my essay, I'm not going to choose this strategy. A second strategy is you can introduce the specific story you're going to be writing about. And this is a perfect strategy for when you're writing about one text only. You mention the author, the title, and you give a brief summary of what the story is about. In Langston Hughes' poem, Harlem, the speaker describes his feelings on giving up on your dreams. A brief little gist of what that poem is about. Once again, this is the sentence frame that you could use whenever you wanted to apply this particular connection strategy. And the third strategy is introducing just in a more general way, not the specific story, not the specific author, but just saying that you're going to be talking about stories or poems or articles or texts. So you're introducing that this is a literary essay. And so an example would be, there are many texts that deal with the theme of dreams. And then my second sentence, which is still part of my connection, would be me mentioning Langston Hughes and Harlem. And I actually could probably even make this my thesis. So here you have, on the right side, the sentence frame that you could use if you wanted to apply this strategy. And this is a perfect strategy to use when you're writing about more than one author or more than one type of text. All right, so now you're going to apply your knowledge of connecting sentences by choosing one of the connecting strategies that I just introduced you and modeled for you. And you're going to write the next sentence or sentences of your intro paragraph. It should not be more than two. And as you saw, most of those strategies could be done in one sentence. You can use the sentence frames as support. As soon as you're done writing the connecting sentence, you are basically done with your introductory, introductory paragraph because we've already written our thesis. So after you write the connecting sentence, you're just going to copy your thesis statement from your flea map so that that sentence is the last sentence of your intro. Once you have that thesis copied, you should have one complete introductory paragraph on your sheet of loose leaf and you're just going to type that up into your draft document in Google Drive. You've already started typing your body paragraphs, so you're going to want to make sure that you put the introduction before those body paragraphs. 